An historic meeting between the Prime Minister and China's President will take place tonight. As optimism grows, the remaining trade sanctions on Australia will be dropped. Live to political editor Andrew Clonell in Beijing. So, Andrew, what have we heard from Anthony Albanese on that matter? Yeah, well, Anthony Albanese, he'll be up here at the Temple of Heaven, which you can see behind me in about an hour's time now. The PM's been keen to accentuate the similarities between his trip to China, the first by an Australian PM in seven years, and Gough Whitlam's ice-breaking trip, visiting Mao Zedong in 1973. And Gough Whitlam came to this location. It's where the emperors used to pray for a harvest. It's about 700 years old, this temple. And, of course, Australia is hoping uh, or praying for our lobster and beef farmers. The PM's all about this in this meeting with President Xi, which will be occurring in about seven or eight hours' time here in Beijing. The second bilateral between the pair comes a couple of weeks after he went to the White House. So, no doubt, US President Joe Biden fed in some feedback on some of the issues of concern he has with China around the South China Sea and human rights and other issues. Anthony Albanese's made it clear he's going to raise them as well as talk about what the countries have in common, which of course includes $150 billion a year of resources that China buys from Australia. But I asked him yesterday what his view was in terms of could he be uh, some sort of intermediary in improving US and China relations? Prime Minister, do you see uh, an opportunity on this trip? Uh, to act as something of a facilitator or a bridge between the US and China. You've just met the US President, uh, you're about to meet the Chinese President. Do you, do you see, apart from representing Australia's national interests, an opportunity to uh, thaw the relations between those two superpowers? Uh, we think improved relations between the United States and China are a good thing. It is good that uh, Secretary Blinken has visited uh, here. It's good that you're having uh, ministerial level uh, dialogue. It's a good thing that President Xi uh, will travel to APEC. We, though, uh, importantly have a relationship with China, have a relationship with the United States. Uh, it's important that they talk to each other and I don't think that they need an intermediary to do so. The important thing about Australia's relationship and something that my government has brought to our international relations is we say the same thing to the same people in a consistent way. That's how you develop trust. So before he landed in Beijing last night for this historic meeting with President Xi, Anthony Albanese attended the International Import Expo in Shanghai. Premier Li Qian gave a pitch there that China should have uh, membership of this Trans-Pacific Pact, which they've been uh, blocked from entering. Uh, Anthony Albanese, very cautious in his words. Australia up till now has opposed it. I don't think there's any question they would support China going in, but he certainly wasn't going to say that ahead of his meeting with President Xi. And I'll make his press conference here in, in just over an hour's time interesting because, again, he doesn't want to front-run this meeting with President Xi. But he, here was Anthony Albanese on that TP, P, P, <laughs> the Trans-Pacific Pact earlier. The way that I deal with things is to have meetings with people. Uh, when we have meetings, not to foreshadow in press conferences what will happen in those meetings. The way that you deal and the way that we've improved relations with countries is by having respectful relations with them and respectful discussions with them. There really is an expectation, though, from the Australian government these trade sanctions will be lifted, the remaining ones on lobster and beef. And Don Farrell let the cat out of the bag, speaking to Sky News in Shanghai on this. It was $20 billion worth of impediments. Uh, with the recent announcement uh, in respect of wine, that's down to uh, $1 billion. Um, we're hopeful that as a result of this visit that we can get that down to, uh, to zero and that the remaining impediments, uh, lobster and, uh, uh, and beef, uh, will be removed. So, Tom, the Foreign Minister Penny Wong's arrived in Beijing. She'll be attending the bilateral with President Xi and another bilateral with Premier Lee. It's pretty 
clear that she's key to all these negotiations, getting this trip happening. And uh, her term, stabilisation of the relationship, is one the Prime Minister and all the Australian officials are using. They're saying it can't return to the situation it was in this relationship when Malcolm Turnbull visited in 2016, but it's all about stabilising it. I'd say the mere fact we're on the ground shows it's it's starting to stabilise. It's in a lot better position than it was a year ago, but there are still many unresolved issues. We're out of the deep freeze. We're still on defrost mm. setting and should be for some time, Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, literally right now, Andrew, I hope it warms up a little bit. I think it's going to soar up to nine degrees. Some sunshine always helps. I, I guess I'm, the I'm other in, fascinating thing will be... I'm in the deep freeze, yeah. Tom. I can tell you. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to tell your camo, a um, bit of sunlight, you know, it might not be the best shot, but maybe it's good for you, the journalist. Um, I guess the fascinating thing to be watched will be Anthony Albanese will be asked about human rights issues, you know, how he manages that dance and, and how far he's willing to go. Because one of the things the opposition has been beginning to say, uh, because the situation and the relationship's going well and the trade's going well, and now they're sort of going, oh, well, hang on, are they going hard enough on, on human rights? Um, which would be a pretty bold move to do when you're in China. Yeah, well, I've noticed James Patterson's getting more of a run than Taylor Swift back home at the moment, Tom. Um, he makes some good points, obviously, but I think they'll be in the opening remarks of Albanese, some mention of that. Certainly in his press conference summing up the meeting tomorrow, he'll mention that. He might not be as strong here as he will be on the ground in Australia on it, but it's mm. been made clear to us that all those sorts of concerns, the South China Sea, human rights, Yang Heng Jun, they're going to be raised at this meeting. They're not shying away from that, the Australians. So, and I'm sure they'll be have been encouraged by President Biden to do so. I think uh, the fact that Joe Biden kept in front of the Australian media talking about his talks with Xi Jinping, the fact that yeah. we're entering this AUKUS agreement, we, we all know where the situation's at. It was interesting at this International Import Expo that uh, Premier Lee hosted in, in Shanghai, who the other participants were, though. Uh, Iran visited, and so did Serbia. So it wasn't really a mainstream thing. The, the message that I'm getting so far uh, from what we're hearing from, the, from Premier Lee and, and just generally on this trip is China, who we know have had some economic troubles, are looking to open up a bit more. That, they're not going to go to the situation they were at but it seems clear to me they want to do more trade, they want to open up more, they want to expand their economic opportunities, and I think that can only yeah. be a good thing for the world if we can take even a little bit of that tension out. It's a good point. They have a huge demographic time bomb coming and, of course, uh, big issues in construction. So when China's doing things, it's usually helping them as well. Andrew Clonell, thank you.